Outer space is an infinite void beyond our atmosphere. A short hundred miles up, space is strangely emptied of our familiar terrestrial gases and dominated by the very concept of distance. Every documentary ever produced on the subject of outer space attempts to tackle this oddly vacant emotional realm. A world governed entirely by an incomprehensible absence of matter surrounded by an endless expanse of time. When we enter the universe on any given evening, looking up from any back porch or viewed from any campsite, our minds become instantly corrupted with their inability to calculate the vast expanses of nothing, interrupted only occasionally by comparatively microscopic spheres of rock and gas, including the one you're standing on. More infrequently, one may encounter stars busying themselves for a few billion years, manufacturing every element in the universe in the core of their nuclear inferno. But above all, there is one concept, the concept of space. This emptiness is so peculiar you would need to travel thousands of miles to find a few hundred atoms of hydrogen. When your mind attempts to traverse this expanse, one is confronted with the infinite inability to perceive. You are left with two endless constructs, distance and time. If we take a short trip at the speed of light to our closest celestial neighbor, our own moon, we would arrive in a little over a second. Light itself, the creator of all things, moves from one location to another at 300 million meters per second, or 186,000 miles per second. This rate is inherently difficult to absorb. Quite fast if your destination is the moon, however painfully slow if you're on your way to another galaxy. The journey from our sun to the Earth is just a short nine minutes at this speed, 45 minutes to Jupiter, and four and a half hours to clear Neptune, the last planet. Our closest interstellar neighbor, the triple star system of Alpha Centauri, is four and a half years away at this pace. Light speed itself, even though romantically portrayed in the movies, presents a host of mechanical difficulties as matter itself theoretically transforms into pure energy at this rate, which can be relatively hard on the equipment. In addition, time as we know it collapses at light speed, rendering the traveler younger than the companions that he or she had left behind if one were ever to return home. Continuing at this cliff, our own Milky Way galaxy is 100,000 light years in diameter and the nearest galaxy, Andromeda, is two and a half million light years from where you're sitting. I will once again attempt to qualify the concept of distance in outer space. Let's go to the moon at light speed. The trip at this pace is approximately one and a quarter seconds. That was it. At 186,000 miles per second, a 225,000 mile trip to the moon is pretty short. The speed of light is a benchmark that is difficult to comprehend. So, let's go to the moon on the freeway. Driving to the moon at 65 miles an hour would take approximately five and a half months. A drive at 65 to our sun would take a staggering 168 years and a trip to Jupiter just over 600. So even at the speed of light, 
each star is separated from us by not so much as the absence of matter, but by a staggering amount of distance and the barrier of time. Time is an odd manipulator. We like to apply the perception of time to everything, beginning with our own lives. How long we've been here, where we are in time and how much time we have left. The measurement we use is the rotation of our planet and the number of trips the Earth makes around the Sun. One rotation is a day, one trip around the Sun is a year. Time is a measurement of the distance traveled and the movement of our home. We try to apply the rotational speed of the Earth to the speed of light at 299 million meters per second, or linear distance reference to the rotation of a planet, so a line compared to a circle. To view light from anywhere but its origin is to look into the past. So time itself changes relative to the creation of light and the distance traveled. Therefore, wherever you are in the cosmos, perception of time is relative to your location, since what you are looking at has already happened. The web of time transforms relative to your position in the cosmos. The sunset you may watch tomorrow is actually nine minutes late. You are looking into the past. Since the sun has already set, you are witnessing an illusion. This brings us to the Big Bang Theory. The concept of the Big Bang Theory is tragically extracted from the human mind's inherent inability to grasp the perception of forever and the concept of infinity. We like a beginning, a middle, and an end. We like stories. Stories are the essence of everything we know. Stories begin, they play out, and then they conclude. The community that is science certainly possesses information beyond a hundred lifetimes of review. Science attempts to qualify and quantify time and the cosmos. Scientific explanations must be contained. Forever is not really an option, even though it is. We, as a species, wholly ignore the option to process the infinite or the concept of nothing. We demand boundaries. The Big Bang Theory infers that our universe was at one time compressed into a sphere the size of a golf ball. A golf ball? Really? If I were told the universe was compacted down to the size of our Earth, uh, that would be a pretty neat trick. How about the size of the Sun? This microscopic origin of all things implies a size, a shape, and a location. A location in a universe that does not exist. We are also instructed to imagine this was before time. If that were the case, time would have never arrived upon an object with no size located in a cosmos that did not exist. So the Big Bang Theory effectively involves a something that is nothing, that is nowhere before there is time. Uh, got it. Even the term timeline suggests a beginning. Considering life itself on our own feeble planet, we are told of a magic moment where life began. The inference is that our young world was devoid of even the slightest suggestion of living things over 500 million years ago, and then the switch was thrown. Apparently, life began from that single point and then evolved through many cycles of magical transformation. Consider the sun's chaos of elemental plasma. The infinite force of nuclear fusion crushes hydrogen into helium and continues to interconnect elements creating the known kaleidoscope of fundamental atomic structures. The matter that comprises all things is constantly being manufactured in the core of every star. 
This process of creation didn't just happen long ago. The sun's atomic manufacturing of the elements is endless. A recent scientific experiment involved applying an electrical current to fundamental elements such as nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. This process synthesized a familiar set of molecules, amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of life. They are the fundamental energy ingredients of all living things on Earth. The chemical elements required to create life's computer, the DNA molecule, are miraculously assembled when energized with electricity. In the natural world, the building blocks of life are manufactured by lightning. 500 million years ago, primitive atoms and molecules were reorganized from chaos by a bolt of electricity from the atmosphere. It would then stand to reason that life's elements were also created moments ago following the Earth's most recent electrical discharge. The inference of a linear timeline of evolution is questionable. It doesn't really make sense that life only began once in the distant past. Since given the same elements and the same jolt from above, life must have also begun a moment ago. Assuming the origin of time changes relative to where it begins, the universe itself cannot have a center since you are at the beginning of time wherever you are. Travel towards any blade of energy in any direction to find its source and you will eventually arrive at the origin of time from where the energy began. In the universe, time began a moment ago from anywhere and transforms into the infinite as it travels. The Big Bang hypothesis strangely requires a location and a moment. One cannot place an object in the center of a cosmos that does not yet exist. If this imaginary object existed before time, then time would have never arrived. The universe could not expand from a location that was nowhere, suddenly begin where there is no time, and then expand into a void that does not exist. The very idea of the Big Bang Theory is a logical impossibility. What all of science is asking us to do is to grant but one miracle and I guess they'll take it from there. It would be just as plausible that there was nothing, and then within the same moment, the cosmos simply appeared. Rather than a conceptual instant of creation followed by a finite existence and then the ultimate demise of the cosmos, imagine that the universe never began. Imagine it has no edges, no shape, and no measurement of time. The cosmic arena never began nor will it ever end. This is of course impossible to comprehend. The cosmos is by definition incomprehensible and should remain so. The definition of the universe is that it cannot be defined. According to the theories of quantum mechanics, there is a small chance the entire universe will suddenly disappear in the next instant. There is also a microscopic possibility that the cosmos, the solar system, the Earth, people, buildings, and all thought was created one second ago. The universe wasn't created eons in the distant past. It is being created constantly. The stars in all of the galaxies have been engaged in an endless cycle forever manufacturing every element known. The light and energy from our sun was created a moment ago, and so too was time.